Hello and welcome back to the AWS Launchpad here at the Venetian in Las Vegas for reInvent 2019. So if you're just joining the stream now, I would love to point out the fact that over the course of these three days, we're actually going to be running a charity match uh, challenge. Uh, this is in collaboration with Three Square Food Bank, an organization that helps uh, quell hunger here in the Southern Nevada region. Uh, they're really amazing. And you can actually scroll down and underneath the video feed, see the extension by which you can donate. And again, each of those donations is matched. Uh, and for every dollar that's donated, uh, due to a 94% efficiency of, of dollar input, they're able to put six meals on the table for folks. So an amazing cause that we're helping to support over the course of this uh, reInvent. And we'll also be giving any excess food from the event over towards their cause as well. So uh, again, a wonderful collaboration. So we have a really exciting session lined up here. Uh, we, we've been talking a little bit about all the launches we've made here at reInvent. Uh, but there's this, been this new thing popping up called pre-invent, right? Where we've now had uh, some of these launches that have come out a week prior to reInvent. And, and the thing we're going to be talking about today is one of them. But before we get into that topic, uh, let's go down the line and see who we've got up here on the panel. Uh, first, hi, I'm Nick Walsh, technical evangelist here at Amazon Web Services. Hi, I'm uh, Ritwik Dar. I'm an engineering manager. I manage uh, AW Single Sign-On. I'm Ron Culley. I'm principal product manager in Identity, and I work with Ritwik on, on uh, Single Sign-On. Hey, everyone. I'm Brandon. You probably just watched me about five minutes ago. So uh, yeah, I'm here on camera talking about AWS stuff, part of the developer relations team. Happy to be here, Ian Wonderful. So we've got some amazing folks here from Identity. And the specific launch we're talking about today is the ability to manage access to AWS centrally for Azure AD users with AWS single sign-on. It's a mouthful, but I'm going to pass it off to you to talk a little bit more about that. So why is this a really exciting launch? Well, we actually had a number of, of announcements over the last couple of weeks. So SSO uh, helps you manage your users' access into AWS centrally rather than managing it in each account individually. And now what we've done is we've made it possible for our customers to use the CLI uh, v2 and be able to sign in and stay into the CLI and directly work with that. And, and Redwick's going to show some really cool things there. We have uh, made a SSO a platform, so now we have applications like IoT SiteWise Monitor and SageMaker Studio Looseleaf that can use SSO to sign in. But one of the big news pieces is that we now allow you to use an external IDP as your identity source. So now instead of having to create users in AWS SSO, you can now connect up Azure AD and sign in with your Azure AD users and groups, and you can manage access for those users and groups. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this was in developer preview actually for the past few months. Is that correct? Or well, the, the CLI was in developer preview for a bit. The uh, Azure AD piece just came out last week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, a multi-pronged sort of uh, toolkit now for developers to be able to access this uh, Azure AD with SSO. Um, all right, well, I know we have some stuff that we want to get into with respect to demos. Is there anything else you think that is really tantamount for developers to know uh, with respect to SSO for sure. Azure AD? Well, I think, I think the key thing is that customers can manage their identities in Azure AD. They can create their groups and organize things the way they want to organize them. They can add users to groups and so forth. And that automatically gets transferred into SSO. So uh, there's a, a, a new protocol that we've implemented called the System for Cross-Domain Identity Management, or SKIM. And what SKIM does is it synchronizes user identities from Azure into SSO. And now I can see them from the SSO console, and I can assign access to those groups to permission sets that are in SSO. That allows me to manage that access centrally across all my accounts. And this begs the question, before we take a look at what this looks like, uh, what other IDPs do we plan to have permissions well, for with SSO? That's, thank you for asking. Yeah, we, we, we start out, we have Azure AD as our first implementation, but we're actively working with AWS partner network members, uh, Okta, OneLogin, Ping Identity, and we're working with them to enable this capability uh, right away. We've already done some preliminary testing on the SAML part. We're using the SAML protocol for authentication, and we've already done preliminary testing to verify that we can do the SAML authentication piece. The skim work, we have some work to do there to get the skim to work. So I've, there's one question on Twitch that I think is actually interesting yeah. to me as well. Uh, I think we should probably just briefly talk about the difference be between the capabilities this adds versus something like using Cognito Federated sure. authentication. Sure. So, AWS SSO is for workforce identity. So this is where you have identities of your employees and maybe your contractors and so forth, and they're using these identities to access your internal systems. 
And what Cognito is about is customer identity. So if I'm building an application and I want it to be customer facing and bring in their identities from Facebook or Google or whatever into that application, then I would use Cognito as an authentication platform. So it provides me a directory that I can use. It provides the authentication pieces that I need to build that application. So what, what SSO is about, though, is the workforce side of things when bringing my employees in. Got it. So it's, it's more like an existing base of, of users and data. Right, right, exactly. So these are not my customer-facing yeah. identities. Got it. Now, the other thing that, that, that we did that's a little bit different, many people are using IM Federation so they can connect uh, an IDP into AWS using IM Federation. And so the, what we're doing is different. In, in IAM Federation, you connect your IDP in every single one of your AWS accounts, and then you go and create roles and manage permissions in each of those accounts. And we're taking away some of that per account work by allowing you to connect the IDP one time and bring in those identities, and then go to one place and manage those identities access across all the accounts simultaneously. And so it makes it a lot easier to do that at scale. I, I know the term single pane of glass has been beaten to death <laughs> yeah. over uh, <laughs> the past few days, but again, I, I think you know, th there's a reason why, and it's because it yeah. just en enables developers to be able to manage things in a much easier fashion and, and wrangle complexity. And one so of, One of the things I wanted to add to that is I think the customers will love that you don't have to manage hand-managed roles on all accounts at all. You know, one of the great things, I think I'm really excited about the SSO managing all roles across all your accounts. You just define your permission sets once, and that just provisions across all roles. I think this is a really... All right, so I know we have some account. demos, and we're, we've, 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 we've got the clock ticking, so I should probably okay. jump into those and sure. show the people on Twitch how they can actually use this. Sure. All right. Ron, great. can you show us a little bit about sure. Azure AD? Yeah, sure, I'll great. show the Azure AD experience. So I'm going to start from the end user experience. So what, what does it mean to an end user if the company is connected with Azure AD. So on my screen, I've got, right now I'm at the SSO uh, page. You, if you want to learn more, SSO or AWS Amazon.com single sign-on. Um, I'm going to go in and to the SSO portal. This is the portal that users get when you've connected up with AWS SSO. And you'll notice that what just happened is that I went to the AWS portal and it redirected me and I'm looking at a Microsoft sign-in page on Azure AD. So I'm going to put in a username that exists in Azure AD. This user does not exist in AWS and I'm going to sign in with them right now. That was password one, two, three, four, right? Uh, no, it was a little more complex uh, oh, than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once I've signed into Azure AD, what happens is it's going to send me back now, and I land in the AWS SSO uh, user portal, and I can see that I have a set of accounts here. These are the only the accounts and the roles that I have access to that were given permission to me through AWS SSO. So I can see that this particular user has access to a billing role. They can go into the management console or the CLI. I have power user access to give me some other per uh, permissions in this test account. If I go into my dev account, I have a little bit more uh, uh, control. I have administrator access. And this is because this particular user is a developer. When they're in the development environment, they want administrative control to do whatever they want. But when we go into either test or the prod accounts, we don't want that, uh, that user to have as much access. And so we take away access as they get into the more production environments. Now, if I go over and take a look and see what happened in the back end on this, I'm going to switch over now to the administrator's experience. So I'm looking at the AWS SSO console, and you can see I have a set of users that came in. These have all been synchronized in using the SKIM protocol, so these came in from Azure AD. I can also take a look and see that here are the list of the groups. I've got to refresh my screen. There we go. Um, these are the list of the groups that came in from Azure AD. I actually, on the Azure AD side, I just said, give these groups access to SSO, and because I gave those groups, it knows to bring in just the users that are belonging into those groups. Now, if I take a look and see how we set this up, you can see in the settings page that I have identity sources, and I can change that. I can either use identities that I manage inside of SSO, right here, or I could use Active Directory directly by connecting up with AD Connector or Managed AD or the external identity provider. And that's the way I had configured it was external identity provider. So I have a SAML configuration where you do the normal exchange of SAML metadata and certificates between the Azure AD identity provider and SSO. And then I go over to the Azure AD side, do the same kind of thing, and that gets us connected. If I look at the Azure AD side, and go, oh, it's going to make me log in again here. Let me do this real quick. 
All right, so I'm looking right now at the AWS SSO application that I added to Azure AD, and you can see these are the, the uh, groups that I added in, and that's what we saw on the other side. So that's, that's the, so from an administrator perspective, I do the SAML connection, I do the SKIM connection, I tell Azure which groups I want to have represented in SSO, and then everything just works. That's super awesome. Yeah, really slick. Uh, quick question before we get into some of the other uh, demo content that we have. Can I go to Azure AD and find an example AWS app in the gallery? Well, we, we tried, uh, our application got denied. Oh, okay. Uh, and so, you know, uh, but, if customers are interested in being yeah. able to have an example template yeah. SSO yeah, app for AWS through Azure it, it, you know, you, it's, it's pretty straightforward to do. It's just like any SAML integration. The gallery app would have made it a little easier, but we could, we, we, uh, it's, you just go up and do the manual configuration, the non-gallery app configuration. And we'll have more information coming out on the details of how to do that. Yeah, you can also talk to the developer relations yep, team developer and we'll relations, help yep. get you pointed to the right resources on that. Great, so that's a, that's a really solid demo of being able to enable this through the, the console, through the GUI, but I know that we also have another demo of being able to use this functionality via the CLI. Does that sound like something we can show the folks at home? Absolutely, this is the part I'm really interested about. So, uh, you know, many of our customers tell us that for their day-to-day -day work, uh, console's great, but they, they spend their day in the command line. And so, this is where the part that I want to show you guys. So this is, uh, about a couple of months ago, we uh, partnered with the AWS CLI team to release a developer preview of the CLI that is deeply integrated with AWS Single Sign-On. What that means is really that uh, now you can just simply go to the CLI, uh, log in with your same corporate credentials that you use for AWS Single Sign-On, and it just shows you all the accounts that you have access to, the exact same view that you get in the console, and the roles that you can use. So I'm going to show you just quickly. Here's my screen right now. This is a different account than Ron used. This is my account, and I have access. You just saw this. I have access to about seven to eight accounts. On each one, I have a, uh, here's an administrator access role, and here's a view only access role. So let me take you to the CLI. Let me sign out from here, just so the CLI makes me log in. Okay, so let's see. So now I go to the CLI, and in a CLI, it's a very simple, uh, we just introduced a new configure command. Can you just crank up the size a little bit? Yeah, yeah absolutely. How's let me. Yeah, yeah it's Enhance. good. Enhance. Okay. Enhance. <laughs> okay, so uh, very simply, you just do AWS configure SSO. At this point, you just give it the same exact user portal URL that your administrator shared with you. Um, you give it the uh, region where SSO is running. And at this point, some magic happens. Uh, <laughs> it, it pops up a browser window. It immediately takes you to the exact sign-in page. So if you're um, if you're used to signing in with MFA uh, and other smart email OTP features that we also support for customers, this is where you do the exact same thing. Let me log in. What's going to happen now is the uh, CLI is going to it's going to ask you whether you you are uh, legitimately trying to use the CLI. This is a security feature we added. Once you click here, go back to the CLI, and there you see all your accounts right now. So these are the same list of accounts I saw. Uh, you can take each account, choose this account, and it shows you the roles that you have access to. Again, exact same experience from the console. Uh, I want to access this account using the view only access role, and so when I hit enter, it's going to ask me which region do you want to use the CLI in when you actually access this account. I choose the region. This should be very familiar with customers who already use the CLI. Um, and it's also recommending a profile name, and so that's another important thing. Uh, we have uh, used, reused the exact same CLI profile configurations for SSO as well. So customers who are familiar with the CLI can simply reuse that. So I'm going to use that. And now at this point, the CLI conveniently just created a uh, profile for me. I'll show you that in a second. And I can run this command against that account. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have any uh, S3 buckets in that, so I'm getting an empty result. So let me show you what happens when you uh, look at the CLI. So we have a configuration file that lists all the profiles that I've created. So let's look at, for example, this one, where I happen to know that I have some S3 buckets. Let's copy that, run the exact same command, S3 ls list buckets, and this time you just give it um, a profile name like that, the exact same profile language that you use today. And voila, that's my uh, all my buckets from, and, and here's the important part. You can simply switch between two accounts. I can just run the other commands. Again, here's my other account. And you can pick another account that you have things in without having to manage any permanent credentials, 
You don't even have to manage any so temporary credentials. So there's no STS token there stuff no I got to deal token. with. It all happens automatically right. in the background. And this will refresh your tokens right away. You can just you keep doing this all day long. Once you're done, uh, this uh, session stays alive for as long as your SSO session is alive. So you can, after you're done for the day, you can do SSO logout and your session is done. So, so, so that means I can, I can go in and I can sign in directly from the CLI in the morning and keep on working for the duration of my session and I don't have to deal with anything else, I can just work. This is why I'm really stoked about That's the usability awesome. of this that CLI. That is awesome, wow. I know the folks in Twitch chat are really stoked about it as well. Um, Great, so we just saw in action being able to set up with Azure AD through the GUI and the console as well as the CLI experience. I'm re what really jumped out to me was the CLI experience, like how dynamic Excellent. sort of the, the field populating was. Uh, yeah, you can talk about that all day, but until you see it, it yeah, just like, doesn't make really, sense. Yeah. I think it'll, I'm really excited about this. Yeah. I think our customers who use the CLI are going to really love this. Awesome, uh, so okay, you've got me sold. I want to use it, where can I go to learn more? Okay, so you can learn more by going to aws.amazon.com slash single, dash sign dash on. Great. Um, you can also go straight into your master account or you, if you've got only one account, just go into that account, go to the console, go to single sign on and enable single sign on and then you'll be able to set this all up. There's no cost. So this is all, this is all just, you get it with wow. your account. So pretty, pretty cool. So completely free, just completely to reiterate. Free, yeah, yeah. No, nothing to buy. Wonderful, uh, and I think you know, going forward, if there is an IDP that I as a customer want to see integrated, who can I contact to sort of get my thoughts in the ring going forward for SSO? For, uh, it's contacts? Yeah. Uh, you can contact me, probably reach out to me, R-C-U-L-L-Y at Amazon.com. Okay. Wonderful. Well, with that, I think that's about all the time that we have. Uh, Ron, Ritwick, thank you again for joining us. You bet. Uh, we've got more exciting co content here at the Launchpad desk coming right up. Stay tuned.